Hello there, and welcome to CNR Extra. Coming to you live from our studios at number five, Oula Hansen Lane, Tesano, Accra. My name is Philip Nielate. Coming up. <music> President Tekufado nominates MP for Adansia Sofa, KT Hammond, as Minister for Trade and Industry, and MP for Abitifi, Brian De Jampon, as Minister for Food and Agriculture. I have in accordance with Article 78.1 of the Constitution, nominated the foreign persons to be appointed as ministers of state in their place. Pensioner bondholders who want to be exempted from government's debt exchange program continue to picket at the finance ministry to drum home their demands. Drugs that you were buying at 400, now you buy at 900 with the same coupon of maybe 20% or 25% that you have. And now you come and say you want to reduce the coupon to 15. And lawyers for family of Shadrach Allo, who died at West Hills Mall following a scuffle between or with the police and private security, have served notice for pressing charges against the Ghana Police Service, the mall, and even bystanders who filmed the incident believed to have caused his death. You know, if you have acted reasonably, it would have occurred to you that what you are doing could cause or contribute to cause the event. As we speak now, what they all did both caused and contributed to cause the death of the person. And later, Ghanaian footballer Christian Achu yet to be identified despite reports of being rescued from an earthquake. CNR Extra is live on City TV, and you can join us with your thoughts, contributions, and suggestions via WhatsApp line 0204-447033. You can as well join us on YouTube as we stream there live on City TV. Ni Lati Lati, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Philip. Thank you for having me. We're going to have uh, some good, some bad <laughs> news coming up. That's a news cycle always. You have some positive Zero. news and some negative Let's news. go straight to the first story. And President Ekufuado. Okay, so we're going to a very uh, our first story, which has to do with uh, the pension bondholders who want to be exempted from government's debt exchange program, and they are continuing to pick it at the finance ministry. So we definitely will bring you that story. But for now, let's go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll give you all the stories we have here on CNR Extra. Stay with us. Roses are red, violets are blue, Valentine's is approaching, so get ready for Shades of Love 2. Shades of Love with Aquabot 2023 is here again. Get your shade of red or pink outfits ready. Hit up your special one and plan a night of unbelievable fun and a whole lot of love. Listening to Aquabot's back-to-back -back hits. Shades of Love 2023 with Aquabot will be the night to remember for all those who love love and happening in both Aquabot cry at in kumase date on valentine's day the 14th of february 2023 at la palm royal beach hotel in accra and on the 18th of february at ice cafe and grill in kumase tickets are going for vvip for 400 ghana cities vip for 300 ghana cities standard tickets for 200 ghana cities and for table bookings and cabanas and all enquiries kindly call 027-227-7757 get your tickets at a 
City TV and City FM, Joy FM, YFM, Accra Mall, Eliza's Restaurant, Jolie Junction, Metro TV, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. Shades of Love with Aqua 2023. It will be awesome. Media Partners. Powered by Think Media Expert. The Heritage Caravan 2023 is officially sold out. Get ready for seven exciting days of adventure through 14 incredible regions of Ghana with the promise of a rich cultural experience, introspective historical visitations, and exhilarating field days with nature. Prepare for seven amazing days of a road trip filled with the sights, sounds, and the aura of a diversified people. Get ready because we are going on the expedition of a lifetime to discover of Ghana from the 4th to the 11th of March on the Heritage Caravan 2023. Pack your bags and let's set off on this spectacular tour from Greater Accra through to the Volta region, through to Eastern region, Ashanti region, Upper East region, Savannah region, Northern region, through to Northeast, Bunu region, Ahafa region, Bunu East region, Western North, Western region and the Central region of Ghana. A journey full of fun, education, information, Wonderful memories and great bonding moments await you on the Heritage Caravan 2023. The Heritage Caravan 2023 is powered by City TV in partnership with the Ghana Tourism Authority with support from City FM and proudly sponsored by Halak Ghana, the European Union, Malta Guinness, Ebony Condoms, Royal Company Limited, National Lotteries Authority, Voltic Mineral Water and Colgate Natural Extracts. <laughs> It's City on the Go. You don't have to miss any of your favorite television and radio shows on City TV and City FM. Enjoy thrilling content from your world of great television and relevant radio at your convenience. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube, turn on your notification button and receive prompts on our live streaming sessions and new content uploads. For easy access to the CityTube page, scan the QR code on your screens, subscribe to the CityTube page and voila! Unlimited content awaits you. Don't forget to subscribe to City Two for amazing content from City TV and City FM. Imagine if you can get all the understanding on some of the difficult subjects you struggle with in school. As a student, do you feel dissatisfied with how hard it is to figure out the subject you're learning? Or as a parent or guardian, do you worry that your child is struggling to understand some of the subjects in school? Well, now you don't need to sign up for extra lessons or tutors. Simply tune in to Class Act, Mondays to Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. on City TV. Class Act is a show that seeks to enable senior high school students gain a much better understanding of what they learn in school. All you need is a TV, a chair, your notebook, and your pen. Get clarity on subjects such as maths, English, IT, and science. Class Act airs every Monday to Thursday at 5.30 p.m. on City TV on DSTV Channel 363 and Go TV Channel 182. Class Act is proudly sponsored by Vodafone Ghana Foundation as part of the Kindred Partners. Don't forget your pens, pencils, and your notebooks and tune in to Class Act only on City TV. Regardless of what your point of view may be, he holds a mirror for you to see the reflection of reality. Two young men, brilliant students, best students in his school. He says, I believe in this as my identity, my religion. You say no. You won't take him because it breaks discipline. I think we should not be at the wrong side of history. There's passionate opinions that shape your point of view. As for the president's credibility in terms of anti-corruption, I'm afraid to say it's in touches. An analytical and non-partisan point of view. I'll give you a proverb, and I prove it. It's a Patrick Wasso, but I'm not a man. This year, forget it. 
dialogue that informs your socio-political point of view. I'm young enough to wait for God's opportunity tomorrow and I'm not uh, in a Are you lacing your boots for 2024? Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't lace it. What, what time you see the shoe anyway? Whether they are having boots? Yeah, no, no, it's, boots. Where, it's, okay, it's not Cambo. <laughs> <laughs> a chance for the duty bearers to provide the citizens with an honest point of view. We are being given rare and privileged access to a building which is part of the National Operations Directorate. And uh, we are so determined, you know, to fight all manner of crime. Even the broad daylight robberies that we see and the footage see, we can say that we are going all out, you know, to make sure that we contain them. Educative chit chat from the experts' point of view. <laughs> no, there is, in fact, that, that, that rumor has been said about so many vaccines. People said the uh, tetanus vaccine causes infertility and we are trying to uh, make our women uh, uh, infertile no it's not true on the point of view with bernard avle every monday and wednesday at 9 p.m only on city tv the point of view is brought to you by cowbell coffee cowbell coffee taste it love it Thanks for staying with us here on CNR Extra or on CGTV. As usual, you can join us with your contributions, suggestions, and comments via WhatsApp line 204 Let's bring you the very first story. An MP for Abitifi Brandy Champo as Minister for Food and Agriculture. Let's bring you that insight. Senator Kofuado has nominated the Member of Parliament for Adansia Sokwa, Katie Hammond, as the Minister of Trade and Industry or the Member of Parliament for Nshiai, so Dr. Stephen Amwa Seven as his deputy. The Member of Parliament for Ibitifis, Brian Achempo, has also been appointed as the Minister for Food and Agriculture. Stephen Asamwa Boating has also been nominated as the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, subject to the vetting and approval of Parliament. City News' parliamentary correspondent, Ni Ayikwe Okain, has more. Parliament on Tuesday, February 7, 2023, reconvened from recess and at 10 a.m., we witnessed the members of Parliament tripping in one after the other into the chamber. In the process, we saw the former minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, as well as the former minority chief whip, Mubarak Muntaka, exchanging pleasantries with their colleague MPs in the House. The Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, in his communication to the House, indicated that President Ekufuado has nominated the MP for Adansia Sokwa, Katie Hammond, to serve as the Minister for Trade and Industry, as well as the MP for Nshiaeso, Dr. Stephen Amwa, to serve as a Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry. He also indicated that the MP for Abetifi, Brian Echampon, has also been nominated to serve as the Minister for Food and Agriculture, among other nominations. Honorable Kobina Tahir Hammond, Member of Parliament for Adansi Asokwa, Minister for Trade and Industry. <laughs> Two, Honorable Brian Achampo, Member of Parliament for Abitifi, Minister for Food and Agriculture. Mr. Stephen Asamoah Boateng, Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs. Uh, 
I have further nominated the following persons as ministers of state, subject to the approval of parliament. One, Honorable Mohammed Amin Adam, member of parliament for Karaga, currently the deputy minister for energy, as minister of state and the minister of finance. To replace, to replace Mr. Charles Adubwahin, the former Minister of State and the Minister of Finance. And two, Honorable Osei Bonsu Amun, Member of Parliament for Aquapim South, currently the Deputy Minister for Local Government Decentralization and rural development as Minister of State at the Ministry of Local Government Decentralization and Rural Development. Reacting to the appointment made by President Ekufuado, the MP for Central Town, Alexander Roosevelt, tells City News that the appointment is an insensitivity act on the part of the President. It is people have been calling on the President to cut down on expenditure. He rather seems to be increasing expenditure. Because once you increase the size of government, then the expenditure will be increasing. Because someone who was a deputy minister, you have moved the person to ministerial position. It means it will also go with something. Salaries will increase, and then other benefits will follow. The conditions are different. So it means that our expenditure is still going up at this time of the day. It's rather unfortunate. Yeah. We were thinking that this morning, when the speaker was about to read, we thought it was going to be cutting down on the number of ministers that we have. But they are rather promoting them. Two deputy ministers have been made ministers of state. It's too bad. Canadians are crying. It's, it shows a sign of insensitivity to the plight of the poor Ghanaian. The majority leader, Sei Che Men Sambunsu, in his welcome address, denied allegations of the former minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, doing the bidding of the majority caucus in parliament. Occasionally, in our working relationship, there were hiccups. But that is what happens in the established parliaments in all established democracies. The Honorable Haruna Idrisu have become part of me for... The past six years that we worked together, on occasions there were allegations of a sellout. The speaker, let me use this occasion to state emphatically and unambiguously that no such thing ever happened. I would develop a very harmonious working relationship, and people then read meanings into them. The business of the minority leader to assist the majority leader in facilitating government work program. And if a person does that, that should not be perceived as selling out to the majority. The newly appointed minority leader, Dr. Kessia Latoforsen, also in his address assured of an unbiased and consultative leadership in the oversight responsibility that it will discharge. To my colleagues on the, on the minority side, we pledge to offer a fair and unbiased, balanced, consultative and principled leadership in our journey to broaden the frontiers of parliamentary oversight and to hold the Akufuado and the Alaji Baumia government to account in a manner that helps deliver public goods. Mr. Speaker, to my colleagues on the majority side, I wish to convey from this side of the House that even as we remain firm, resolute, and principled in our journey to discharge our oversight duties as a caucus, we shall not be needlessly obstructionist in as much as what is under consideration is in the interest of the people of Ghana, and the right process and requirements have been adhered to. The House is adjourned to Wednesday. Reporting for City News, my name is Ni Ayukwe Oka. So some of the vacant positions have been uh, refilled, or let's put it that way. There has been a, a replacement of some of uh, the uh, ministers who had to 
um, resign for reasons uh, that they are going to do other things for themselves. And also, that was the Trades and Industry Minister, uh, former Alan Kojo Chairman Singh, had to leave that particular position. And also, the Food and Agriculture former minister, that is uh, Dr. Osu Ifi Akuto, that is what brought the vacuum in those particular ministries. And when he left, that is Alan uh, we had uh, the finance minister, Ken Ufuriata, to be the caretaker minister after it went to the sanitary, uh, the, the lands and natural resources, lands and natural resources minister, yeah, Samuel Abdullah Jinapo. Then now a substantive minister uh, have been brought they into... Are <laughs> let, let, let's put it that way. Yeah, designate. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just uh, parliament has to mm. approve, barring parliamentary approval. And also for the food and uh, Greek ministry, when we had Dr. Also, if we akuto uh, resigning, we had Hawa uh, Kumsin uh, coming in minister. to be the caretaker minister, and now we are having mm. a nominee for that particular ministry that is uh, Brian Champo. Some are calling that this should have been the reshuffle and not uh, just coming in to appoint and elevate other ministers. What do you make of this? Because uh, it looks like uh, the call for the reshuffle uh, is more, and it looks like though the nomination has been done, it looks like it's not so much uh, welcomed. Like you rightly indicated, we had in the grapevine that mm. there was going to be a ministerial reshuffle, reshuffle yes. uh, because of, uh, you know, calls by some political observers that the time is right for the country to reduce its ministers and also save the country some costs. But yesterday, as it was announced, this, I must say, that is not a reshuffle. Mm. This is a replacement, a replacement of, appointment. of some of the vacant positions, like you've mentioned, and not to hold brief for the government, or also incur the wrath of persons who are calling for, you know, the numbers to be reduced. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. And so that is what uh, the Speaker of Parliament announced. But people are still divided as far as this particular issue is concerned. And in my estimation, I Out to clear and as a listening government they want to reduce numbers blah 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 the explanations they've been given in the past and so for me it's 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 not surprising that a lot of people are quite disappointed in the decision taken by the president mm -hmm. people will look we are calling for a reduction in numbers if the opportunity has presented itself why not do that other than well it could also be that the government strategy is to replace these ministers and then come out later to announce a proper ministerial reshuffling where we can see possibly the measure of some ministries as we've been uh, you know advocating for and so that is what uh, and for me a lot of people have also not questioned mm -hmm. the capabilities of these persons exactly. who have been nominated which means that it's not it's not a personal issue people don't really have issues with the people who have been nominated it's just for the uh, uh, governance architecture or the framework that people are calling for a reduction so here uh, persons like Professor Rans, for example, and Professor Makuba, the yes. KNS is saying that, well, this should have been a reshuffle once and for all. But if Alan has resigned, or oh, 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 Dr. Uso Dr. has resigned, and the uh, Chief Tenancy Minister has resigned, has resigned yes. Charles Edubuahin has been sacked, Sack, and yes. so people have to be replaced, which you've done. You should have taken the opportunity to do the, the research because look times are really hard and for it is one of the issues you know a, a lot of people have yes, been raising for the, even the individual the DDE the and all DDE that cutting all down that, the numbers and making sure expenditure is reduced and, 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 and so and so be as it, it may we we'll just hope that uh, they will subject themselves to vetting mm. and they will appear before parliament appointment committee they will be vetted and so we see what they will also bring on board in terms of their expertise as far as the governance is concerned. But we are still looking forward to that main reshuffling by the government because I think it is one thing that the government must do. The duplicity in some of the roles being played by some of these ministers are glaring. So, for instance, we have something like information and, you know, communication. Uh, communication. Yeah. People are advocating that these two ministries should be merged. We also have... Uh, how do you call it? Even food and agriculture plus fisheries and aquaculture, there have been that 
uh, arguments mm. that mm. oh well why don't we bring them together and order and so for me less than two years or about two years to election let's see if president well, so we, we are waiting as well for the parliamentary approval or the vetting that will be done to uh, approve these uh, nominees from the president away from that let's go to the pensioner bondholders and they have resolved to pick it at the finance ministry until their concerns are addressed let's bring you that insert on the pension and bondholders who have asked for exemption from the government's debt exchange program on Tuesday continued picketing at the finance ministry to drum home their demands. Now, the retiree domestic investors had a similar protest on Monday to express dissatisfaction to the 15% coupon rate proposed by the government in the exchange. The deadline for the exchange program expires on Tuesday with no extension as announced by the finance minister. The following report by City News' Charles Ousukumi has more. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has confirmed concerns raised by observers that a failure to secure an IMF bailout as soon as possible will have dire consequences on the Ghanaian economy. Ghana's public debt to GDP now surpasses 100% and requires restructuring to reach sustainable levels of about 55% by the year 2028. Government has since introduced a domestic debt exchange program intended to restructure about 137 billion cities of local debt. Some domestic investors have refused to exchange their bonds and after a series of protests, organized labor managed to force the government to exempt pension funds. Although the Ghana Association of Banks, the Ghana Securities Industry Association and the Ghana Insurers Association have signed onto the program, government is yet to reach the 80% needed for a successful debt exchange. This has forced the government to propose new and improved terms of 5% maturity and 10% interest payments to individual bondholders and 5 years maturity at 15% coupon rates to pensioners. Both groups have rejected the terms and the pensioners have resorted to picketing at the Ministry of Finance to press home their demands. It's day two of the picketing as the finance ministry by the pensioner bondholders forum who are asking the finance ministry to exempt them totally from the domestic debt exchange program even after conversations with the finance minister yesterday where he sought to plead with the pensioners to contribute to the reviving of the Ghanaian economy they have still come here today to the express their displeasure at the terms proposed by the minister. The minister has proposed a five-year maturity and 15% coupon rate for the pensioners, but they say that's not enough. They want complete exemption. I have here with me the convener for the group, uh, Dr. Eduan Anianchi. The minister has been pleading. Yesterday he addressed the nation. He says that if we don't do this immediately, there are dire consequences for the economy. You still want this exemption? Yeah, why we still want the exemption? is that these coupons, whatever coupon rate that we were getting, we are now going to lose part. It is that loss which will be of very severe, uh, give us very severe consequences to the pensioner. Because these are the monies we use to buy our drugs. The drugs money has uh, gone up astronomically. Drugs that we were buying at 400, now you buy at 900 with the same coupon of maybe 20% or 25% that you have. And now you come and say you want to reduce the coupon to 15. So the question is, who will top up that amount for the pensioner to be able to pay for the drugs and all other expenses? The minister should tell us how he, he thinks that we should get the top up for that. And so pensioners, we are still saying that we don't want our cash flows to be impaired. So keep on exempt us so that we can still receive the coupons that we are, we are, we are, we are having. That's, that's a simple thing that we are demanding. I think we've said it over and over again that we are pensioners and um, these bonds, the coupons we derive from these bonds are what helps us to maintain our livelihoods, especially in terms of health care, in terms of buying petrol, in terms of everything that we do, and even in terms of helping the needy. 
So it's not just about us. It's about us, the communities in which we live, and the assistance we give to others. Because most of us don't work. We don't have any other source of income apart from these bonds, in addition to the little pensions that we um, get at the end of every month. So to deny us of this, even by 0.01%, is a big deal for us. Buying petrol, um, the cost of transportation, etc., etc., weighs a heavy toll on us. So we are asking and pleading for such a listening government to totally exempt us. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata, in his Monday address to the nation, implored individual bondholders, pensioners, and bondholders in collective investment schemes to take advantage of the window of opportunity and join in the domestic debt exchange operation. According to him, the economy is in crisis and he needs everybody on board to be able to revive it. But the pensioners don't want to have any of that. They want none of it. They say they want their bonds and their investments paid in full when it's due. Because according to them, they are heavily dependent on the proceeds from these bonds and they have planned their lives according to these proceeds. They want complete exemption and they have come here today again to pick it and express their displeasure at the finance ministry. For City News, Charles Osukumi reporting. So the pensioner bondholders have noted that they would pick it at the finance ministry until uh, there is an exemption. And uh, today uh, they are still at the finance ministry uh, trying to drum home uh, their displeasure about the fact that government may include them in the uh, debt exchange program. Let's go live uh, to the phone lines and speak to my colleague Charles Owusu Kumi who uh, is at uh, the Finance Ministry to monitor activities there. Charles, good morning. Good morning, Philip. Uh, the pensioner bondholders there today, as they've indicated that they would pick it until their demands are met. What can you tell us from the grounds? You're absolutely right. Um, for the past three days, each day for an hour, the Pensioner Bondholders Forum, um, which comprises of retirees who have invested their money into government securities, come to the Finance Ministry um, to sort of express their displeasure at the Ministry's decision to refuse them exemption at its stand from the Domestic Debt Exchange Program. So today, again, um, they were here between the hours of 10 and 11, um, singing Ghanaian patriotic songs, um, wielding placards, again expressing displeasure at this decision made by the finance ministry. Now, basically what they're saying is that the ministry has offered them a five-year maturity at 15% coupon rate. But they say their issues are not even with the five years maturity. It's the coupon rates they have issues with because most of them have investments at about 20 to 30 percent. And because this is the only source of their livelihoods for most of them, they are not working, they don't have any stream of income, they cannot take the hits the government is asking of them. Again, they are asking why um, government has been able to exempt pension funds uh, belonging to active workers and is asking them pensioners who are retired to rather take the hit. So they are asking for what other people in the Ghanaian economy are also doing to, as it were, help the economy be revived just as the minister has been calling for. So they want to see other people also take a hit. Um, they want the ministry to, um, government to cut down on expenditure. They want to see real programs and processes being implemented to ensure that there is enough cut in government expenditure, in the size of government, and all these things, to be able, before they can also begin to think about taking the 
uh, cuts that the minister is asking. Because averagely, government says that the pensioners' bonds averagely is about 18% um, coupon rate, but it's offering 15%. And so it is asking them to take the 3.5% cut. This, they say they will not until they see feasible things being done by other people in the economy to also take a hit. Okay, so um, are they there in their numbers? And also, when they picketed on Monday, the finance minister himself ordered that uh, they should be brought back so that he speaks to them. Was that the same case uh, yesterday? Is that the same case today? Have they been engaged from the finance ministry? I mean, what can you tell us about the numbers there? So uh, on Monday, they were about 50. Yesterday, the number dwindled to about 30. That was similar for today. So today, there were about 30 of them. Um, unfortunately, they were not addressed by anybody yesterday and today. Um, you are right. You are right when you say that on Monday, the minister spoke to them. He spoke to them at length, essentially imploring them to contribute to see this as a contribution from them, the pensioners, to um, bringing back Ghana's economy. Did, they, did, did they make any, after, again, uh, Charles, before you go on, did they make any, let's just wrap up this, did they make any uh, indication or give any indication that they will be there tomorrow uh, to pick it again? Well, yes, they've made that intention quite clear that they will be here every working day, until their demands are met. So we're expecting them to be here tomorrow. Um, they won't be here on Tuesday, though, because um, the Minister for Finance has been invited by mm. Parliament to come and explain some of the issues surrounding the debt exchange program. So they say they'll be rather be at Parliament on Tuesday. But from now until then, they'll be here tomorrow and on Friday. Uh, yes, that is the information we have. Thank you so much, Charles. Uh, Charles Kumi, uh, Ousu Kumi, is my colleague in the city newsroom, and he is stationed at uh, the finance ministry to monitor events there that has uh, to do directly with the pensioner bondholders who are asking for exemption from the debt exchange program. Neil Latte, what uh, do you use your thoughts briefly? <laughs> then uh, we, we go on with other stories. Well, essentially, these pensioners are not relenting in their mm. quest to be exempted or excluded from the domestic debt exchange and for three clear days, straight days of course, they have been picketing at the finance ministry except for the first day when they were engaged by the finance minister. The subsequent days they've not had any form of engagement uh, which I don't want to believe that's going to be the end of it. And the numbers also as Charles reported is dwindling and so by the... <laughs> As the time goes, you realize that some people will lose interest, it will be left with just a hand strength. And then the strength of yeah. these persons. And it's just like I was saying yesterday, the language of the of the pensioners is not the language of the finance minister. Mm. The pensioners are clear in their minds. They do not want to be part of this exchange program. It's not about how you revise the coupon rate or the tenor. They just don't want to be part of it. And their main concern also is the fact that you've exempted pension funds of those working and those of them who have saved to rely on this money when they, when they retire, you want to touch it. And so I, I'm just worried once again because the individual bondholders, it looks as if they are not pushing again mm -hmm. just because of the expiration of the, the, uh, of the deadline. Uh, the window that has been given and all that. But these pensioners, it appears they've been left on their own. And I, I, I don't want to believe that the West well, it looks is like going Parliament to has waded into, into the yes, conversation. Yes, so we expect the finance yeah. minister to appear before For Parliament. Because the speaker makes specific reference mm. to the issue of pensioners who have been picketing at the finance ministry. So let's see what the, uh, the minister will say before Parliament if there's going to be a reconsideration. Uh, that's going to be good certainly. Teams. We will give you all the update on this particular story. You are watching CNR Extra on City TV, still to come. <laughs> Ghanaian footballer Christian Achu yet to be identified despite reports of being rescued from an earthquake rubble in Turkey. <laughs> Stay with us, we're back with more stories.
Imagine if you can get all the understanding on some of the difficult subjects you struggle with in school. As a student, do you feel dissatisfied with how hard it is to figure out the subject you're learning? Or as a parent or guardian, do you worry that your child is struggling to understand some of the subjects in school? Well, now you don't need to sign up for extra lessons or tutors. Simply tune in to Class Act, Mondays to Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. on City TV. Class Act is a show that seeks to enable senior high school students gain a much better understanding of what they learn in school. All you need is a TV, a chair, your notebook, and your pen. Get clarity on subjects such as maths, English, IT, and science. Class Act airs every Monday to Thursday at 5.30 p.m. on City TV, on DSTV Channel 363, and Go TV Channel 182. Class Act is proudly sponsored by Vodafone Ghana Foundation as part of the Kindred Partners. Don't forget your pens, pencils, and your notebooks, and tune in to Class Act, only on City TV. Many thanks for staying with us here on CNR Extra. Let's bring you some more stories. And Ghanaian footballer Christian Achu is yet to be identified despite reports of being rescued uh, from the earthquake rubble in Turkey. Let's bring you that insert. Now, Ghanaian footballer Christian Achu is receiving medical treatment on his injured right foot in a hospital after being rescued from earthquake rubble in Turkey. Now, City Sports Yao Ajay Minta has more on this report. Mere hours after scoring his debut goal, Ghanaian winger Christian Achu was part of an 11-man contingent from Turkey's Super League side Hatay Spor that got caught up in the devastating earthquakes that hit Turkey. The group of men got buried under the rubble of the earthquakes that affected Turkey's towns and cities, including Gaziantep, Hatay, and Adana. A 7.5 and 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit the European nation, causing several buildings to collapse, leading to over 5,000 dead and injured people at the time of this report, Turkey's second division side, Yeni Matayaspo, confirmed that goalkeeper Ahmed Eyub Tekaslan died under the rubble of a collapsed building. Tremors from the violent quakes were felt as far north as Denmark and Greenland and as far south as Cyprus and Egypt. Turkey's Prime Minister, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has declared a three-month state of emergency in the affected areas that lie in the border region between Turkey and Syria. Football legend and former Black Stars captain Stephen Apia starred in the Turkish League for Fenerbahce and commiserated with the people of Turkey, stating, I stand with the people of Turkey in this difficult time. My condolences to the people who lost family and friends yesterday. However, joy came in the morning when Turkish journalist Yagi Sabankoglu delivered, and I quote, the best news this morning by reporting that Christian Achu was removed from the rubble alive. Achu was pulled out of the rubble amid a mix of snow, rain, and frigid conditions that affected rescue efforts, worsening his already dire situation. In the aftermath of reports on Achu's rescue that was corroborated by Hatay Sport Vice President Mustafa Ozad, the Ghana Football Association posted on its official Twitter page, we've received some positive news that Christian Achu has been successfully rescued from the rubble of the collapsed building and is receiving treatment. Sabon Koglu, who has reported extensively on the natural disaster, provided further updates on Achu's situation and efforts to rescue other victims. Uh, as you said, we got the best news of the day from Atsu, and I confirmed it from uh, Hatay board. Atsu was pulled alive from the rubble and taken to the hospital right now. His condition is good, but we are waiting for more good news from Atsu because after 26 hours, he emerged from the rubble and it's so critic news, uh, good news, but critic news, because uh, he was in the rubble since 26 hours. Therefore, we're still waiting uh, more good news from Atsu. And also, uh, I have bad news about Taner Savut, who works for Atay Sport as sporting director. Taner Savut is still under the rubble. 
search efforts is uh, continue. We look uh, forward to it. I hope. I hope. I spoke with uh, Atay Spor uh, president uh, one hour ago. He said to me Atsu was uh, in the rubble, but right now we rescued him and he's good condition in the hospital. And uh, we are following his health situation. Mm. Ghana's football fraternity received more good news as Hazakes Ladies Football Club confirmed three former players of the second D based team are safe. Queen Bell, Amankwa, Regina Enchi, and Gifty Asifwa played for Hazakes Ladies before moving to Turkey. Amankwa and Enchi were part of the Hazakes Ladies team that finished in second place at the Maiden Calf Women's Champions League tournament. Evelyn Insia Asari is Chief Executive Officer of Hazakes Ladies. Yes, we spoke to them yesterday and then this morning too, and we have been told that they are doing so great. Where the incident happened, I, I, I'm told it's not closer to where they are. They are at Antaya. The 10 regions that uh, the incident happened, they were not affected. So they are cool, but their leave is being suspended. And they told us that no um, flight is working as, as of now, even if they want to come back to Ghana. So that is the challenge now. But apart from that, they are doing so well. Yeah, we, we, we got them through WhatsApp. And I think because their place is not closer to where the incident, the main incident happened, I think that's the reason why we got them. Immediately we heard of the incident, we, we tried getting through to them. But fortunately, we got to Regina. And Regina also communicated to the, the other two. Christian Achu isn't out of the woods yet, and prayers continue for the man who scored the final goal in Ghana's dazzling 6 1 display over Egypt in Kumase in the 2014 World Cup qualifiers. But there is an update to this story as to whether Christian Achu was uh, the individual that was uh, rescued from the rubble uh, well, during the earthquake in Turkey. Uh, my colleague, Yao Ejeminta of City Sports, is here to give us updates on that story. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. The reason is, uh, the, the news came out that he's under the rubble. Yeah. Then he's been found. Another story came, he wasn't found. Then we had another one, he's been found again. What is the update?